Can you hear Coach, me? good morning. Good morning. Hey, so over the course of the fall practice, um, who would you say are three or four guys who you feel have been the most consistent, the most consistently impressive to you? Well, that's really hard to say because we've been all over the board a little bit, but I would probably say Gallo started out being the most consistent. Um, uh, McKenzie's been pretty solid. Um, and everybody else is just trying to grow together and try to trying to figure it out. So, you know, I haven't had any what I like to see really major bright spots, but I've had a lot of good spots where guys have played in spurts that, you know, lets me know that we just got a ways to go in terms of putting things together. Gotcha. All right, Brad, go with your second and then Alex. Yeah, and then the second one, I just wanted to check in on, on McKenzie, sort of just how are you going to handle that? And, and is he going to be playing in the exhibitions here coming up? He will be playing. He's been practicing and, and uh, all that's behind us. We got to move forward. All right, Alex and Zach. Thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Last year, heading into the exhibitions, your team was obviously you had more known quantities, more returning players this year with all the new guys. How important are these two chances to kind of get out there and have some competition before the regular season tips off in terms of just evaluating where certain guys are and what you – maybe have in terms of lineups and, and different rotations? No, it's very important. I mean, we got together this summer. The process began, and it's been a lot of work up until this point where these guys are pretty much a beat up on each other. And so I'm kind of anxious to see where we are uh, when we tip it up on Sunday. Uh, to kind of give me some indication of things that we need to do to get better and and continue to grow. So um, I can't wait to Sunday to see where we are. All right, Zach and Mike Niz. Uh, Mike, I wanted to ask about um, Caleb Banks, obviously a guy we saw in some, some productive cameos last year, particularly off the bench in Big Ten, play a lot of energy. Um, you know, just just how have you seen him expand his game as maybe a guy that has the potential to do a lot of different things, play different positions, defend different positions? Just kind of what what have you seen from him from maybe, you know, the end of the Miami game last year to this point? Well, he's grown a little bit. He and C.J. both have grown, um, even Malik, you know, but, you know, I need more. And right now, Caleb uh, – has been kind of hampered with the growing pool. So he's kind of been on the sideline the last week and a half. So we we kind of gradually bring him back slowly because that's something that can be nagging all year. And I and I don't need that. So I need him healthy and ready to go. Uh, I don't know if we'll, we'll play him uh, on Sunday. But him and CJ and, and Malik are used to this to this season, man. I mean, I'm going to need them to play at a much higher level than that that they played in the past. Mike the Mason. Yeah, Mike. At Big Ten Media Days, you kind of said you'd been banged up a little bit, and we're kind of struggling to get um, you know a full look at at everything. Um, have the last few weeks been more productive in terms of having everybody available? I mean, I know you just mentioned Caleb having the groin pull, but overall, have have you had uh, better? luck at getting everybody on the floor. Yeah, I mean, this week we, we've we had a couple of scrimmages amongst ourselves, and the last scrimmage was really promising, probably the best we've played uh, uh, against one another. I mean, both, both the red and the white really competed. Uh, uh, but, you know, again, only time is going to tell. I mean, Sunday will give us a, a better indication of where we are and and, you know, from that point, we just got to continue to grow. Mason, then Tom Brew. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask about Gabe Cups, specifically leading that second unit with Ja'Kai out and, and him kind of being your only freshman guard at, uh, in, in the backcourt. How do you kind of anticipate him being able to lead the offense and, and kind of with this exhibition, what does this opportunity provide for him? He's been solid. I mean, I can't, you know, 
I didn't mention him earlier, but that he's been really one of the bright spots too. Um, I mean, he just he seems to do everything that we we've asked him to do, and uh, I can't help but in time he's going to continue to get better and grow once he figures out the college game. Um, but he's done a lot of good things on the floor for us. I mean, in terms of, I mean, winning, winning basketball plays. That's what I like to. Uh, to call it because he he does a lot of good things to help you win games. Tom Brew then Zion. Mike, I know you don't care about preseason rankings or anything like that, but you're not an AP top 25 team, barely in the top 50 in Ken Palm and stuff. It's, from the national narrative, do you think you get to see these guys every day? Do you think you're better than a top 50 team and that we'll see uh, that improve over the course of the next several months? Only time will tell. You know, again, I you just said it, I don't care about rankings you got to play the games and um you know we'll start here soon and kind of get a feel of where we are and see what we need to continue to grow in I mean you know you're talking about 10 new new faces six guys that um you know came from different programs and that, that are trying to figure out me as a coach and all the things that I'm asking them to do so uh, only time will tell. We just gotta gotta play the game to see where you are. Zion and Seth. Hey Mike, along those lines, just with so much overturn of the roster, do you feel like kind of what you see in these couple of exhibition games becomes more important than it has been in recent years? No, I, every game is important, guys. When I first walked in the door two years ago, you know, I mean, these guys didn't know me, and you, you put in a system in place. You know, every game is important. You know what I mean? I came back with the same, you know, pretty much the same group last year. And, you know, you go out and you play and you, you, you try to see if you guys have gotten better, you know, individually as well as a team. And so every game is important. I don't care if, you know, these two scrimmage games, those are important games for our ball club to, to grow and get better and see where you are as a team. Seth and Ty Golden. Mike, I'm wondering how X has kind of held up through through preseason. Obviously, you know, he spent a lot of time, you know, rehabbing that injury and getting back to 100% over the summer. Have you seen him being able to kind of grow his game anywhere from the player he was uh, last year? You know, X, everything is in place for X. I just need X to just to lead more. That's all he needs to think about doing. Uh, you know, his game will will take care of itself based on, the fact that he's got experience at the college level now and um, he knows what I'm about. Uh, he's got the speed as a point guard. I mean, he can defend. You know, he can score the ball. I mean, there's nothing X can't do. I just need him to lead more and make sure and guys are getting better around him and he's holding people accountable. That's what captain's supposed to do. Todd and Jim Coyle. Mike, it's the uh, proverbial first game. You get to see a lot of players against uh, a real opposition. Uh, is it any more important for any of these first-year guys, whether they're transfers or freshmen, on Sunday than it is for anybody else to see what they can do against somebody else? You know, it's, I think as a team, it's it's for everybody. You know, I mean, CJ and Caleb and – Malik didn't play a whole lot of minutes last year. So it's just as important for those guys as well as the new guys that have come in. I mean, we've done a lot since this summer getting together. And uh, so now I just, as a, from a coaching standpoint, my staff and I, we want to see, you know, if they've attained a, a lot of the things that we've taught them and, uh, and, and does it carry over into a, a real game. So only time will tell, you know, that we can see, where we are as a ball club. Jim Coyle and Jack. Hey, Mike, how are you, sir? Good, and you? Good, good, good. Thank you very much. Uh, early on, age was something that was used against you in regards to recruiting and being able to uh, to relate to to, the, to today's player. But do you think that maybe because of your NBA experience and today's players seems more mentally inclined to think like a professional has been a big help in getting – uh, in, in reaching these guys as successfully as you have. And then the second part, there's also a family aspect to recruiting. How does it feel to about to be a grandfather probably within days? Well, only you guys 
was worrying about the age. That was never a factor when I came in the door. I've been coaching a long time and, and, you know, I'm healthy enough to coach mentally. I'm sharp enough to coach. So I didn't have a problem coming back to Indiana. That thought that was you guys saying that I was too old and, and couldn't recruit. And you have to recruit some in the pros gentlemen, when you, when you're going after free agencies and some of the same things I'm doing now, I had to do at the pro level. You just do it on a bigger scale in terms of, you know, as far as the money, the money makes it bigger. And so you got to make sure that you're doing your due diligence when you're recruiting a, a free agent or getting ready to make a trade that you know what the hell you're doing because you can get, you can, it could bite you in the butt. So it's no different than, you know, coming to college and, and, you know, having to, to deal with them. You're dealing with parents in the pros. You're dealing with their handlers in the pros, their agents. It's the same shit that you're going through now that I'm going through now. I did in the NBA, but you guys wouldn't know that because you weren't there. So I felt good about my position coming in. My thing was just being able to sit at the table with the best players that were, that are out there. You know, I, that's how I was that's the only thing I was thinking about when I came in, how can I get it, get to the best players? And, you know, and my coaching staff, they, you know, they gave me their opinions about it early on and saying, Hey, you got to wait your turn. Well, I didn't feel as though I had to wait my turn, just get us to the table and let's see what happens. And that's, you know, we've had some pretty good success being able to recruit and talk to some of the top players. We haven't gotten them all. And you're not. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. But, hell, if you never get an opportunity to talk to the best players, it's not going to work as far as I'm concerned. And as far as being a granddaddy, I'm happy as hell. It's, you know, that's two weeks away, and I'm looking forward to that. All right, Jack, last one. Hey, Mike, um, a couple weeks ago in, in Minneapolis, you mentioned that um, Khalil Ware and – Anthony Walker had been dealing with some minor injuries, I guess. How are they doing? And do you expect to have them um, Sunday for the exhibition? No, everybody, everybody is healthy except right now, uh, uh, Caleb Banks and uh, Jakiah. You know, those two guys won't play on Sunday. Um, I mean, Banks could play if I wanted to play, but I'm just, you know, this growing thing, I've dealt with players that have had growing pools and, you know, those and calf pulls, things like that is is nagging. And if you don't watch it closely and, and rehab right, you know, it could be a problem all season. And I'm going to need Caleb Banks. Uh, so we might not play him on Sunday for sure. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, guys. Thank hey, you.